Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Dominion County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers and listeners advisory video cast. Enjoy. Library Connections number 132. This is the Friday, February 17th, 2023 edition of Library Connections. Kicking things off with the top five fiction bestsellers for this week from the New York Times. At number one, Encore in Death by J.D. Robb, the 56th book in the In Death series. Eve Dallas investigates the mysterious death of a well-loved star of stage and screen. At number two, it Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover. A battered wife, raised in a violent home, attempts to halt the cycle of abuse. At number three, It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover. In the sequel to It Ends With Us, Lily deals with her jealous ex-husband as she reconnects with her first boyfriend. At number four, Heartbones by Colleen Hoover. After an unexpected death prevents her from going to Penn State and forces her to move in with her absent father, Bayan Grimm has a summer fling with the rich guy next door. And at number five, Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. A scientist and single mother, living in California in the 1960s, becomes a star on a TV cooking show. Moving on to our top five nonfiction bestsellers, at number one, Spare by Prince Harry. The Duke of Sussex details his struggles with the royal family, loss of his mother, service in the British Army, and marriage to Meghan Markle. At number two, The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. How trauma affects the body and mind and innovative treatments for recovery. At number three, I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. The actress and filmmaker describes her eating disorders and difficult relationship with her mother. At number four, Love, Pamela by Pamela Anderson. The actress and activist details her childhood, rise to fame, and ways she is reclaiming the narrative of her life. And at number five, The Light We Carry by Michelle Obama. The former first lady shares personal stories and tools she uses to deal with difficult situations. Our first recommended read for this week is the new novel Mame by Jessica George. Let me tell you about the plot. For the past eight years, Maddie has been the primary caretaker for her father who is suffering from a severe case of Parkinson's. She sacrificed her chance to move away to college, chase her dream career, and pursue a romantic relationship, while her mother spent year-long stints in Ghana managing the family business, and her brother did his own thing. But when her mother returns and suggests Maddie move out while she take care of her husband, Maddie is confronted with an adolescence worth of milestones and no guidance on where to start. George's first novel is a coming-of-age story written for a generation who has grown more accustomed to seeking out advice from strangers on the internet than from those they see every day. While there are moments when the plot feels predictable, George illustrates the complexities of navigating two cultures 
in rising from the pressure of other people's expectations beautifully. This is a clever and deeply moving debut. And that's the book list review. Our second recommended read for this week is the new book, River Sing Me Home, by Eleanor Shearer. This one's historical fiction and follows a recently freed slave named Rachel, who starts out in the Caribbean. Let me tell you a little about it. Emancipation does not seem different from slavery when it comes to the Providence Plantation on Barbados. The workers are told they'll be apprentices for six years, unable to leave. Rachel, who has never known freedom and never had anything that was hers alone, not even her children, flees. She begins a search for her five surviving children that will take her across the Caribbean in this moving testament to a mother's love and the heartbreaking toll of families torn apart. Along the way, Rachel finds generosity among strangers, many with their own stories of escape, and celebrates the endurance of love even in the face of injustice and threats. As her travels take her from Barbados across the ocean to Demerara and Trinidad, she traces her children's journeys after they were sold away. The past they take to find freedom, safety, and better lives reveal the struggles of a generation born into bondage. For Rachel, although her efforts to locate her children do not always succeed as she hoped, freedom is found in her search. And that's the book list review. Our first audiobook recommendation for this week is the first audio set in a series of four. They're called Biblio Mysteries, and they're short stories, short mysteries, set in the book world, so in bookstores or libraries. And these are all done by well-known authors. This audio is read by Daniel Thomas May and features 13 Biblio Mysteries by Jeffrey Deaver, C.J. Box, Ken Bruin, Reed Farrell Coleman, Peter Blauner, Thomas H. Cook, Lauren D. Estelman, William Link, Laura Lipman, Ann Perry, Mickey Spillane, Max Allen Collins, Andrew Taylor, and David Bell. And if you enjoy this short story collection of mysteries, check out the other three volumes in the series, all available through Hoopla. Our second audiobook recommendation for the week is the first book and audio in a fantasy romance series. It's called Neon Gods by Katie Robert. This is the first book in the Dark Olympus series. The audio is read by two narrators, Zara Hampton Brown and Alex Moorcock. He was supposed to be a myth, but the moment I crossed the river Styx and fell under his dark spell, he was, quite simply, mine. And that gives you an idea of the plot, doesn't it? I'm digressing, of course. Let me get back to the plot. Society darling Persephone Dimitru plans to flee the ultra-modern city of Olympus and start over, far from the backstabbing politics of the Thirteen Houses. But all that's ripped away when her mother ambushes her with an engagement to Zeus, the dangerous power behind their glittering city's dark facade. With no options left, Persephone flees to the forbidden undercity and makes a devil's bargain with a man she once believed a myth, a man who awakens her to a world she never knew existed. Hades has spent his life in the shadows, and he has no intention of stepping into the light. 
but when he finds that Persephone can offer a little slice of the revenge he spent years craving, it's all the excuse he needs to help her for a price. Yet every breathless night spent tangled together has given Hades a taste for Persephone, and he'll go to war with Olympus itself to keep her close. And as noted, this is the first book in the Dark Olympus series. There are more, so if you like fantasy, romance, thrillers, check out this one and check out the series. Want more reading, listening, and viewing recommendations? Check out the Tech and Book Talk blog, which offers weekly and monthly recommendations, and the back catalog of Library Connections videos, which you can find via the library's YouTube page. Moving on to our next section, next week at the library, we'll take a brief look at the events and activities hosted by the library for the week ahead of us. This time out, that's the week of February 20th through the 25th. This information can also be found online. Just visit the library's website located at ssclibrary.org and click on the big bold calendar link you'll see located near the top of the page. And on a registration note, and I'm going to pause here for a moment before I talk about registration. If you hear that noise in the background, that actually is the elevator running up and down near the front of the library, near the Tioga Avenue entrance. Uh, this is not a room I like to record in for that reason, because you really can hear it in this room. But the other room that I had originally booked, I got bumped out of, and there's no other room at the end. So for this week, excuse the background noise and know that it's the elevator. You can imagine yourself going up and down to the second floor and down to the first at the library. And having Major League digress there, let me get back to the registration note about programs. Registration is required for programs unless otherwise specified or unless the program is of the online on-demand variety, in which, of course, please just help yourself. You can register for programs through the library's website by calling the library at area code 607-936-3713 or by just plain dropping by the library. You're always welcome. On Monday, February 20th, we've got two items to note. The first is that the Great Book Checkout continues. On Thursday, February 23rd, which is this Thursday, the Children's Department will begin moving downstairs into their newly renovated Mary Lou Walker Children's Room and they don't want to have to carry all those books. So if you checked out some books, it would greatly lighten their load. And also of note, there will be a few weeks between February 23rd and March 10th when the children's department will be closed and you will not be able to check out any children's materials at all. The last day to check out children's materials will be Wednesday, February 22nd. So just note that. And then from 10.30 to 11.30 a.m., we have an event that is full. So this is a reminder for people who have registered. It's simple soap making for kids ages 5 through 10. This event has been very popular, and they may add a second session. So if this is something that your kids are interested in doing, send an email to Sue McConnell at mcconnells at stls.org and asked to be put on the waiting list for a possible second session. On Tuesday, February 21st, we have a whole host of programs to bring to your attention, kicking things off with the first program of the week in our ESL series, Coffee, Tea, and English Vocabulary, from 9.15 to 10.15 a.m. This program is hybrid, being held both at the library in person and online. Then from 10 to 10.30 a.m., it's story time with Miss Sue. This program will be held in the children's department at the library. From 10.30 to 11.30 a.m., it's the second of our coffee, tea, and English programs for the week. This one, conversation. This program, too, is hybrid, again being held at the library in person and via Zoom. Then from 1 to 3 p.m., we have the weekly adult Scrabble, which is held in the library's reading room. 
Moving on to our afternoon and evening programs, from 3 to 4.30 p.m., it's the weekly GATLAS, which stands for Gay at the Library After School. GATLAS offers a safe and supportive space for youth to talk about gender, sexuality, and what's going on in their lives. The program is open to anyone ages 11 through 18, which is grades 6 through 12, and held every Tuesday. GATLAS is a partnership program co-hosted by the library and Planned Parenthood of Greater New York. The program is held at the library. The program contact from Planned Parenthood is also your host, Carmen Greco, and your library contact for the program is our head honcho of Young Adult Services, Kayla Crane. From 6 to 7 p.m., we have an event that is full, but just FYI, as a reminder, for those who have registered for it, it's the pickup for the February Junior Chef program. This time out, they're making banana cookies, and you pick up your kit to make the cookies from 6 to 7 p.m. on the 21st. On Wednesday, February 22nd, our first program of the day is Miss Sue's Preschool Storytime, which is held from 10 to 10.30 a.m. in the Children's Department. From noon to 1 p.m., it's the monthly Sticky Notes Thematic Book Club. This is an online program held via Zoom, so you need to contact the hostess, Michelle Wells, our head honcho of adult services, for the Zoom link. Then from 1 to 3 p.m., it's the weekly May Zhang, which is held in the library's reading room. Moving on to our afternoon and evening programs, from 3 to 4.30 p.m., it's Atlas, which stands for At the Library After School. This program is held at the library, and the Atlas program provides a relaxing environment to wind down after school, work on homework, play games, use library resources, and participate in guided makerspace projects. Registration is not required. Then from 6 to 8 p.m., it's the Courting Adult Writers Group, which is a hybrid program held both at the library in person and via Zoom. On Thursday, February 23rd, our first program of the day is a drop-in program. Between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m., you can drop in to the Civic Center Ice Rink for Kids Explore, Homeschool Group, Ice Skating. This, of course, is intended for homeschoolers. Homeschoolers can skate for a discounted admission of only $2. You can bring your own skates or rent a pair for only a dollar. This program and series is in partnership with the City of Corning Parks and Recreation Department. Then from 10 to 11.30 a.m., it's the Coffee, Tea, and English Book Club, which is a hybrid program. On Friday, February 24th, our first two programs of the day are actually full. They are special story times for kids, the first is from 10 to 11, and it's the February Artful Storytime Part 4. And the second from noon to 1 p.m. is the February Artsy Kids Series, also Part 4. So if you've already registered for those programs for your kids, just a reminder, if those programs sound good to you and you haven't registered, check out our calendar of events for future sessions. Then from 1 to 1.20 p.m., we have the new edition of Library Connections making its debut on Facebook and YouTube. From 4 to 6.30 p.m., we have Teen Dungeons & Dragons, led by Dungeon Master Robin. This gathering is suitable for ages 13 through 17. All levels of experience will be welcomed in this safe space. Come to one or all gatherings. Then from 7 to 8 p.m., we have a special program. It's Black History Month Poetry Reading with Akua Leslie Hope. This program is being held via Zoom. The history of Africans in America was first celebrated in 1926. The week-long celebration grew to a month-long observation in 1976. Akua will read from her body of work and some others that reflect on the history of Black Americans. The reading will be streamed live on the Zoom platform, and you don't need to sign up. You can either type in the link you see on the slide here, 
or you can go to the library's website located at ssclibrary.org, click on the events calendar, there's a link for it on our homepage, and then look for February 24th in the last program on that day, click on the title, it starts out Black History Month, and from the page that displays, you will be able to click on the direct link. And briefly, here are our library program's contacts. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. Have a great week.